Hey everybody, it's Gil here from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser, and as you likely know, we're not aboard Dream Chaser right now. It is still near Louisiana, so we're looking for things to kind of keep us busy, uh, given that we don't have boat projects in front of us until we get this sucker sailed back across the Gulf of Mexico. So last week, we actually started a project to build a set of stairs, a staircase to go up to a bunk bed for the little one. It's been a lot of fun just getting back involved with some kind of DIY project. I missed the heck out of doing that. Uh, and frankly, having the house here allows me to have a little bit of a wood shop. So if you watched any of our sailing videos, you know we had a storage location that kind of was set up as our workshop for doing a lot of these boat projects and when we needed to cut wood and things like that. So you would see us come to this little storage shed, roll up the garage door, and we would do the work in there. Uh, well, now we have it right here in the house, so it's been a lot of fun. This is the second video in a two-part series on making these stairs. Uh, and again, I don't know how many people would actually need to make this exact item, but it just goes to show that with a flat piece of paper, a pencil, a little bit of imagination, you can sketch out a design, you can build it. You don't have to be a master architect or builder to build these kinds of things. Frankly, you just kind of go with it. And if you have some challenges or concerns or issues, you just solve them. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the things we had to do was look for a way to secure the backside of the stairs at the bottom. Um, where we wanted to make sure they stayed nice and square. A simple little solution made out of a couple of one by fours gave us all the support we needed. So we hope you enjoyed this video, which is the second and final part of this DIY series. So it's been a little while since I got to use my bandsaw and it's kind of fun to be able to. So I'm gonna actually cut the tops of each step on the bandsaw. So one of the things I probably could have done to make this a little better is put the wider blade on for cross cutting or ripping wood. This one's a real thin blade for doing scroll work and intricate sort of circles and curves. Uh, I like to do work on a wood lathe, so I have it set up mainly for cutting um, halves or quarters of logs in a big circle to make large wooden bowls. That it's good for making those curves. It's not real good for running a real good long straight cut. And what will end up happening is that blade will twist just a little bit as you're going through it. And once it starts going at an angle, it's sort of hard to recover if you're going slow. You saw me back up a couple of times. That's exactly what I was doing is get it back on the line. Um, it, it's amazing. It's actually a little bit better to just kind of go pretty fast and watch it and, and slowly make your adjustments as you, as you need to. I'm not overly concerned with it. I've got a belt sander over here. I can just uh, you know put the face of these right up against the belt sander to get the side real smooth. Um, and at the end of the day, when everything gets screwed together, this thing will be caulked and painted, so you won't see any of those little tiny, you know, uh, millimeter gaps that, where it's maybe slightly curved. Now that I have all of those pieces cut, the purpose of that is to go on the vertical surfaces behind each step. Those are going to give me the enclosed look when you're viewing the steps from the front. They're not going to be a see-through all the way to the shelves that will be hidden behind them. So I'm going to start working on getting those attached to ultimately hold the, the whole um, stair framework upright. And the other thing I did was I took a look at the bed and I wasn't able to actually rotate that outer wall around. There were some um, dowels and pins that went into the back side of it. So instead of doing that, Deb had a great idea. She said, why don't we just remove the railing up on that one side so the whole foot of the bed is essentially open. I did exactly that and I'm going to use those rails to go along, the, I'm going to extend them as if they were uh, continuing beyond the length of the bed over the back side of the stairs and then they'll connect to my outer wall which will provide my handrail. I think that might be a pretty neat way to do it. So let's go ahead and start getting those pieces assembled uh, onto the actual stair risers. So I need two more runners. I actually ran out of this uh, little one by four the other day. So I need two of these that are 10.75 inches or 10 and three quarters. These are gonna go along the very top step runner and what they'll do is hold the actual top step, something to screw into. It's also gonna hold a back that I'm gonna mount that'll hook those rails I just mentioned to in a minute. So that is gonna be cut in just a couple of minutes. So I just cut these two pieces on the bandsaw and now it's just gonna be a matter of attaching them right back here 
to the back side of this and that gives me my support for where the actual step will go and I can put the screw of the step into the hardwood instead of into the MDF. That's the whole purpose behind this. I'll grab a couple of clamps. All right, we've got those in. It's now time to start putting the front faces on this, which should start to get this sort of uh, self-standing. <laughs> Oops, longer screws, apparently. So this was sort of a last minute thing. This is the piece that we cut off the side of the bed. And I think what I'll do is try and get a piece mounted back here, something along these lines, and then I'll cut this to the right length, and that'll go right there and marry right up to the pole that will sit right here where my arm is. That's the back side of the bed. The stairs are coming along. And also, peek -a well, This is it. I've got at least the steps done. So all of the backs are on. The actual riser steps are on themselves. We've got the brackets in the back. Um, it's fairly sturdy, obviously, when it connects to the bed and we put the second rail on the outside with the handrail, it'll be even better. But this is a good start. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's actually been a few days now. I haven't worked on these steps. I'm about to get back to it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and um, attach the vertical surface up on the very bottom step. I still need to do that. I'm also going to be working on attaching the handrail to this exterior wall that'll go along the sides of the steps. Uh, I'll be routing out a groove in the bottom of it so that the handrail will actually slide down over that wall and give it a lot of good support. I'm also going to be routing out a channel on the bottom side of it to install a set of RGB colored strip lights so that the little one can change the color of the lights to whatever she wants while she's going up and down her stairs. I think that'll be a cool touch. I mentioned it to her and she's excited about it. So let's get to work. Well, it's now time to go ahead and start measuring this long side piece. This is the side that's gonna go along the stairwell. And I want it to be at the same height as the top rail. So I went ahead and measured it down there. Let's go ahead and mark this out. I've got my small speed square. I love these things. They're so handy for getting a nice uh, straight and square line. And since this edge is gonna be covered by the handrail, I'm not worried if it's not a perfect cut, so I'm just gonna do it with jigsaw. So it's here and it's simple. Wrap my saw up, put it up, try to keep everything nice and neat in my working area. So what I'm gonna end up doing is, I bought a pre-made handrail for decks actually, which is fine, because I'm gonna sand it and, uh, and ultimately put uh, a paint and finish on it. But my goal here is, to route out a groove all the way down this. You'll notice this one has holes pre-made for banisters, but I needed this style versus the one that had a large groove in it because the large groove was too wide to fit nice on this. So what I'll do is I'll end up putting a, a groove on one side of this uh, edge of these holes off center and another one on the other side. That will allow me to slide the board into this, lock it in place, and I think we should look really good here. So I decided to do this a fairly simple way. I just set my small miter um, slide to the angle I need. I've opened up the throat of my bandsaw very high so I can actually cut this um, rail on its side. I think it's gonna make it a little easier, it's quick to set up. And again, I'm not worried about absolute perfection because once I glue these together, caulk and sand them, this is all gonna be painted. Unlike doing some of the work in the boat where everything's gonna be varnished, every single joint has to be just, just perfect. And in this case, I get some liberty. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing um, cut. Let me zoom in and I'll cut it real quick. I do like this saw, it's so easy to set up. Just a couple little levers. matter standing her up. Once the table saw was set up, I cut the grooves on the bottom side of the handrails. I saved you from watching all of that and I'm now just cleaning up my mess. So I need to put this vertical face on, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on its back. It'll make it easier to screw down. I've got to add another bracket to the bottom where I didn't have to do that here because the steps were holding these in. So just like before, where I put a bracket here to hold these steps down. I'm going to do the same thing right on the inside like this. And that's going to be 
so I can screw that faceplate onto each of these. go ahead and cut some shelf widths that are going to go underneath the steps. It'll also help secure everything. Now it's just a matter of sliding this piece right on in. I cut this one for this side shelf. Fits perfect. This one's going to be a little short for up here, but I might use it. It's, it's an inch short. It saves me from cutting that whole other piece funny thing is the baby asked not to put a shelf down here because she wants to be able to climb in there and just kind of hang out like a little fort. So I won't put one here. So I think what I am going to do though is I'm going to build um, a small L-shaped support that can go in the bottom to help hold that out. So if she climbs in she'll have to climb over that but that'll help really secure and strengthen that bottom. I didn't film this, but let me show you what I did. I did create a bracket down here just to help strengthen this, and I did cut shelves for each of these different pieces I can carry in. But I made this small bracket as a standalone unit, and then once it was assembled with countersunk screws from the outside, I slid it in between the two outer areas and then screwed it in from the outside. That gives it a good amount of security and holds everything together very well. So with this piece standing here free, I'm going to go ahead and put the outer wall on it and start to dry fit the handrails. Um, let's get moving on it. Oh, this is great. So there's the dry fit of these, and there's a nice little edge routed right underneath here where the LED lights can go. Run all the way up underneath this piece, and the plug can come down the back, which is exactly what I want. So now I'm going to work on how to get this rail that matches the rest of the bed along the back side of these stairs. Um, I'm going to have to make them a little bit narrower, so I am just finding the center. This is the width of the, of the stairs. I'm going to find the center of this board and use it as a bit of a marker. That's 18 inches, so my bed center is 9. So what I'm basically doing is lining the center of this thing up. This is where I'm going to have to cut this. When I cut the grooves on the back side of this handrail to sit on the wall and the other one to house the LED lights, um, you know, I cut them all the way through, right, right to the edge. And this end of the banister ultimately will stick out and you'll see it at the, the butt end of it. So what I did was just took a couple of small pieces of wood, filled them in on the end, and then I rounded all of this over on a belt sander just so that the part that sticks out beyond the steps isn't a sharp edge. So this will be nice and easy for, uh, you know, grabbing as you go to get up the steps. I keep using my left hand, it'll be on the right hand side, but um, that's all sanded. And when you look at the end of it, you cannot see the grooves there. So it'll completely hide any of those lights and it'll look nice uh, on, this, on the side you see when you walk into the room. Well, it's been a bit of a project, but it's now time to start sanding and priming this particular unit. Uh, just to give you an idea what this will look like in the back side here, I'm gonna hold this up just so you can see it. The, um, this small back wall here, and then this will be screwed into this particular rail, and then it will also attach to the bed itself. And that's what will give it one continuous look. This matches the rest of it. So we're going to take a small piece of this up to the hardware store, get the color paint to match this, and we will be all set to start priming and painting. I know it doesn't look great right now, but we're about to go ahead and start painting in just a few minutes. Um, I went ahead and used some just filler on, to fill in all of the screw holes where we assembled this. You can still see I have some down the side of it here. Um, this is essentially the side that's going to go up against the cottage bed, so 99% of it won't be seen. Uh, but I'm still going to go ahead and sand these nice and smooth. That way if for some reason it does come away from the bed or the, where the ladder comes in and the front, if you look from inside the cottage out through the ladder rungs, you would see this side. So we want to make sure it looks nice and smooth. We've done the same thing on all sides that are exposed. I even did it on the back, even though it's not exposed. I want it to look good if you happen to see it from the back, especially since we will put shelves on, uh, on each of these level steps. So uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and get this sanded up and then I won't bore you with watching all the painting, but we are gonna go ahead and prime it all and then we're gonna paint it. Everything is gonna be a, 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 a semi-gloss gray that matches the cottage and we are gonna paint the handrails uh, that go along the, the angled edge here and along the top. We're gonna paint those white. So I think it's gonna look pretty good, but let's get started with at least getting this thing sanded up ready and then priming and painting. So I'd love to say this is really complex, but it's not. And it's, I don't have a, a, hand, a, a disc sander here at this house. It's all on the boat. So I'm just hand sanding this smooth. final product. So the stairs are what we added. The bed was there before. You can kind of see what it looks like. Looks good. Schwab, yeah, it really does. What do you think of it, honey? I love it. Yeah? And the best part is Alexa turned Schwab's bed red. This is the best part of it. You like that, huh? <laughs> and then I had a lot of open space. Or just up down here, and I could just step on here and then climb up. You can go any way you want, huh? Yeah, but I only have two ways to go. Yeah, very cool. So this is the gradual sunshine and sunset one that goes from whitish to yellow to a reddish purple color and back. I also have an underwater scene because she loves to call herself the Grand Dolphin, and I always call it the Grand Squid, and here's the underwater one. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video series, this DIY project for making a set of stairs, a staircase, going up to a bunk bed. It was a blast to do. We got to play with a bunch of the different tools that we haven't used in a little while, so that was a lot of fun. And for the first time in a little bit of time, Deb got to help out with one of these DIY projects. And I miss having my partner in crime work on these. For so long when the boat was on the hard and we were doing the refit, I would drive down to New Orleans and I would do the work while she was kind of back um, in the camp or whatever. And she was watching the little ones. So we couldn't necessarily take a whole day and you know spend it suspended up on, a, on the top of the boat in a, in a boat yard. Um, it was just too dangerous and couldn't keep the kids' interest for that long. So for a, a long time, in the last year or so, a lot of our projects were just me kind of working on them. So it's been a lot of fun being able to have Deb back involved with this one. So hope you guys enjoy it. We'll continue to look for interesting content uh, as we take that time we need to just get the boat sailed back over here. We, we're about ready as soon as this coronavirus thing lifts uh, and we get a couple of little projects done that we need to just do to make sure everything's good to go on the return trip. We will absolutely be sailing it back here and then we'll continue any other projects we have and frankly we will be sailing more and I'm looking forward to that. We actually took the boat out um, the last couple weeks, a little power boat we have here at home, and there are a ton of little anchorages all over Charlotte Harbor. Um, you can go down to Cabbage Key and Little Yuseppa Island, and there's these great little places to just anchor, hang out off the grid for the weekend, dinghy around, dinghy through some mangrove places, kayak, all kinds of stuff. I can't wait to start doing that more and more. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you next Friday.